This is Bobby Newman, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's Research Minutes, the CPRI Knowledge Hub's weekly podcast where we interview researchers about the latest work being done in the field to help improve education. We're here today with Milin Felt, who just recently published a paper in Big Data and Society called Social Media and the Social Sciences, How Researchers Employ Big Data Analytics. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Uh, what is big data and how is it relevant to education research? Big data is usually qualified by a few different measures. One of them is scale and um, volume, uh, velocity, variety, scope. These are some of the ways that we determine what is big data. But for the purposes of the kind of research I do, I focus specifically on social media when I look at big data. You did a meta-analysis of big data um, on social media research. What were the results of that analysis? Well, what I found by and large is that social scientists are not really using big data. And even when they look at social media and examine different platforms such as Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, they are relying more on traditional methods like interviews, like surveys, things that we have done in social sciences for research for many years. And these are not methods that I'm opposed to. I think that these are important methods. But when they were conducting research and examining social media, and looking at these platforms, they weren't actually pulling the data and examining what was happening there. Now, sometimes they were scrolling through feeds and uh, doing some kind of textual analysis, but very few studies were actually using tools to download data and analyze them in large systematic ways. And those that did tended to focus on only maybe one platform and very rarely did they combine traditional methods with the big data kind of analysis. Why should social scientists utilize big data analysis? Yeah, so there are a lot of reasons why. And I would say probably my top reason is that um, if we leave big data to government and to corporate interests, then the idea of social good is never properly addressed. Social scientists are really good at asking the kinds of questions that um, get at power and distribution and try to question how people are perhaps being exploited or issues of surveillance, things like that. And if we leave big data analysis just to people and large, powerful groups um, who have maybe different interests in mind than what your average person would have, then we miss out. Also, I think it's really important um, that social scientists make use of this because, you know, we're really interested in individuals and in society. We are interested in how social situations are constructed and pulled together. And yet a lot of our research methods will change the way we get our data. And the interesting thing when you have big data like social media that you can analyze is that this is information about people that they are putting out voluntarily in a public kind of setting. And uh, it hasn't been influenced by the research in any way, shape or form. You're still gonna have to make decisions on which data you gather, which ones you focus on, the algorithms you use. I mean, there's still so many things that influence it and yet it's still a nice pure kind of way to access what's being said, to understand public discourse to understand public sentiment and so many of the things that social media can reveal for us. And then to also understand who's in whose network, right? That's right. Yeah, and that's the third piece that's always of great interest is how social networks are working and really who are the influential speakers and, and who are the gatekeepers and how is the information flowing. And we can really map that out and see it in different ways than we could easily 20, 30 years ago. Your paper had two parts. One was the meta-analysis of other social science researchers. And then the second part was an analysis of the analytic tools that are available to researchers. Can you tell me a little bit about those analytic tools and what were some of the highlights of the ones that stuck out for you? Sure. Well, there are a lot of tools available for researchers and I focused on Twitter specifically and I focused on free tools three free tools, just to be specific here. So the three that I highlight were, uh, the first one was Storify, which is not really intended to be a research tool. It was created for journalists and for other kinds of purposes to kind of gather interesting social media and be able to post it. And then I talked about Netlytic, and then I talked about uh, the 
this is a large acronym, it's the DMITCAD or the Digital Methods Initiative Twitter Capture and Analysis Toolset. So um, these are all based in different places and they all have strengths and weaknesses. What Storify is good for is it's a very simple platform dashboards to use and you can collect data from all sorts of different social media platforms. So, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Google Plus and it goes on and on and on YouTube, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You would then be connecting your own personal accounts to it, but you have limits partially constrained by Storify, Storify and partially um, constrained by the API involved. So you can't do huge data sets with this. The next one is Netlytic, and it's really good for somebody who is not familiar with big data analysis but needs an entry point. It does a lot of automatic things like word counts and, and things like that that you can do. Um, but what's really important for me is that you can then also export whatever data you have and analyze it with more robust tools. You know, social network analysis really requires a, a stronger kind of uh, program to do it than what is built into Netlytic. Uh, but Netlytic does a very simple version of it. And so if you're not as familiar with it, you get that easy kind of access. So then the third one is DMI TCAT uh, or just TCAT. And um, it is a tool that was created by Bernard Reinhardt. He is in Amsterdam and is part of the University of Amsterdam and the Digital Methods Initiative. But TCAT is really the most dynamic. It's incredibly robust. The things it can do are just amazing and astounding. However, it has the steepest entry point for technical expertise necessary. So in order to run TCAT, you would need a dedicated server. These other tools are being hosted somewhere else and someone else is managing the server and granting you access. To run mm -hmm. TCAT, you need a server, you need somebody who can program Python script and who can, it's a free um, tool only because they have posted um, their own code for it, right? That it's okay. And so then you can pull it onto your own server and let it run and do all kinds of different things. So why would policymakers find this type of research relevant to their policy making or influence their policy making? Mm -hmm. So it goes back to some of those reasons why we look at social media data in the first place. It's a good way to understand the networks. It's a good way to understand the public discourse and the public sentiment. And it's important when we're trying to represent what is going on and trying to make policy kind of decisions that we don't just have the narrow focus, but that you can zoom out and get the big picture. And when you have big data analysis, you can not only see the big picture, but you can create good visualizations that show what's going on. And you could almost make the argument that um, social media is one giant focus group, right? <laughs> that we've got people sharing their opinions openly in, in large ways. Um, but again, a focus group that isn't shaped by the researcher as much as just by what people want to share, what people want to discuss. Um, and with that kind of honest version of, and I don't know if honest is the right word because we're all performing in some way or another when we're on social media and we all have something in mind, but it's mm -hmm. not shaped by a researcher, it's shaped by that public performance that we're trying to make on social media. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was nice of you to take time out of your schedule to talk to us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to Research Minutes. To share your thoughts on this discussion, head to KHUB Conversations at cprehub.org. To subscribe to our weekly podcast and listen to more interviews, head to soundcloud.com forward slash CPRI Knowledge Hub. And for the latest videos, podcasts, and discussion updates, Follow us at CPRI Hub on Twitter and CPRI Knowledge Hub on Facebook. We look forward to hearing from you.